tonight, the nominees are Tim Allen, Ted Danson, John Goodman, Jerry Seinfeld, and Gary Shandling. Find out who the winner is live. The Emmy Awards, tonight. Good evening, I'm Mike Binkley. And I'm Inga Hammond. Topping Eyewitness News scandal for the House cleaning at the state capitol. Tonight, DFLers are set to elect a new majority leader. A somber remembrance today for soldiers missing in action from America's wars. But at the Metrodome, it was anything but somber as the twins and their fans honored Dave Winfield. Eyewitness News is coming up next. When it comes to westerns, we've got the whole shooting match. Blockbuster Video. The most movies for less. See your dealer now before the fall deals are gone. Remember your first project? Knox knows that feeling. Like the first time you hammered a nail in straight. The smell of fresh cut wood. The thickness of pure white paint. It all starts at Knox, where we've been helping you with your projects for over 60 years. With quality products and low prices from people who know what they sell. When your next project rolls around, it's Knox. We work to make your job easier. NYPD Blue and why it's so controversial. At three. This is KSTP, Channel 5, St. Paul, Minneapolis. Live from your 24-hour news channel, this is Eyewitness News. I'm here today to accept responsibility for not reporting the incident to the appropriate authorities and to apologize to the people of Minnesota for not having been more forthcoming with the information. Good evening. Six months ago, the shakeup in the Minnesota House began. House Majority Leader Alan Welly stepped aside after announcing his involvement in the $90,000 phone scandal. Well, tonight, DFLers are trying to put all that behind them and start with a clean slate. They're electing their new House Majority Leader, who replaces Irv Anderson. Now, Anderson just recently became the new House Speaker after D. Long resigned her post. Porter Ross Curtis joins us now from the newsroom with a preview of tonight's election. Ross? Well, like an egg, a tonight's decision is a crucial one that could shape the DFL's leadership for years to come. Republicans say the flurry of changes the past year may leave the DFL somewhat vulnerable, so the new majority leader will now have to repair some of the political damage and reinstate trust. It's a golf swing that seemed to accelerate the changes in the DFL party. The initial blow was the phone gate scandal that resulted in the resignation of longtime majority leader Alan Welly. Then phone gate and the West Coast golf outing led to D. Long's resignation as House Speaker. As majority leader Irv Anderson moved into the Speaker's position, it is clear the DFL is headed for a changing shift in power. Tonight, DFLers will have to choose between three candidates headed by Brooklyn Center Representative Phil Carruthers, the man even his opponents consider the favorite to win. We have a diverse caucus of uh, people throughout the state, different districts, uh, different needs, and uh, people feel I'm a consensus builder. And uh, so the experience, together with the fact that I'm a good listener and a, a consensus builder, I think that's what people are looking for. Fridley Representative Wayne Simino says he'll offer a choice for the old guard. The 19-year lawmaker says he'll restore the party's confidence and strengthen the party for the 94 session and the crucial election that will follow. St. Paul Representative Alice Hausman is also a candidate and says whoever is elected, the caucus will have to come together and get things done. So uh, hopefully you're going to see some productive time, uh, some moving ahead um, from some of the, of the uh, almost uh, spinning our wheels that, that we sometimes felt uh, was happening this year. All candidates admit what may happen tonight is Carruthers securing a victory after two or three ballots. But tonight's winner faces an uphill battle, building unity and consensus in a time of change. And tonight's winner will serve as chair of the powerful House Rules Committee, which has control over policies and hiring. We'll let you know if there are any surprises tonight at 10. 
Ross, who does uh, Irv Anderson want to succeed him, has he said? Uh, no, he hasn't, and he won't, saying it's up to the caucus members to choose tonight. He will, however, have one vote tonight as just an ordinary member of the caucus. Okay. Thanks, Ross. Well, a Minnesota man has died in a crash involving a U.S. Army truck. Now, the accident happened yesterday near the town of Buffalo in Wright County. Investigators say the five-ton Army vehicle swerved to miss another car, skidded into a ditch, then flipped over. Scott Stamer of St. Michael, Minnesota, was killed. He was a passenger in the truck. The truck driver and another passenger suffered only minor injuries. Several rural Minnesota towns have been conned into thinking they'll soon be getting much-needed doctors. The FBI is looking into allegations that a fake recruiter promised to refer physicians to the towns in exchange for at least $2,000. And because they're so desperate for someone to care for their residents, a number of town officials fell for the scheme. Small communities continue to struggle to find doctors to replace retiring ones. That's because rural doctors face longer hours, lower pay, and fewer job opportunities for their spouses. Well, this is a day set aside to remember those who never returned from America's wars. Today is National POW MIA Recognition Day. And this afternoon, veterans and supporters gathered in St. Paul for a ceremony. Now, because of rainy weather, the program was held in a walkway underneath the Veterans Service Building. The ceremony was to remember those who served in our armed services were taken prisoner or are missing and unaccounted for. Valentine James L., U.S. Army, missing February 12, 1951. In addition to the reading of missing soldiers' names, helicopters conducted a flyover as a salute to POWs and MIAs. Well, the summer is officially over for University of Minnesota students. Today is moving day for thousands of college kids heading back for another year of education. This rain isn't helping and parking isn't helping. Well, the action was fast and furious outside residence halls across the U of M campus. One benefit, Gopher football players lent a hand at the dorms, helping move the heavy items. What's next on the students' agenda? I try to find my room, move in, get acquainted with everyone around me, and have fun. Well, the students will have a few days to recover from the moving nightmare. New classes don't begin until Thursday. Dwan Wick had no wife or family, but he did have a cat and more than a half a million dollars when he died in December. The Minnesota probate court has approved Wick's rather, rather strange will, giving all his money to a charity animal program. The Purina Pets for People program supplies senior citizens with dogs, L cats, free of charge. Every penny of the Hokum, Minnesota man's estate, an estimated $545,000, will now go to charity. Speaking of big money, two Powerball players cracked the $30 million jackpot, but neither was from Minnesota. The winning tickets were sold in Indiana and Delaware. Now here are the lucky numbers. 1, 8, 18, 29, 38, and the Powerball number 42. We'll leave these up for you. After taxes, each winner will get $592,000 a year for the next 20 years. Now three Minnesota players will receive $100,000 for getting every number except the Powerball. Uh, not bad at all. Mm -hmm. Well, the honors keep on coming for St. Paul's own Dave Winfield. As we all know, Winfield collected hit number 3,000 on Thursday, virtually guaranteeing him a spot in the Hall of Fame as if he didn't already have it wrapped That's up. That's true. Today, Dave's current team plus the team that helped him earn a World Series ring celebrated the milestone. Eric Gustafson joins us a little bit early with details on that. Hi, Gus. Hi, and you're Mike. Uh, on that now famous September Thursday night, uh, Dave Winfield said it would probably take a while for this feat to sink in. Well, there's a good chance that reaching 3,000 hits has probably sunk in just a little bit now, and that made moments at today's Dome all that much more special and all that much more enjoyable. With his wife Tanya at his side, some of Winfield's closest colleagues, his teammates from this year and last year from Toronto, gathered just before opening pitch today at the Dome to pay tribute to Big Dave. Uh, twins owner Carl Polat awarded Winfield with a bronze bat. His twins offered up an autographed photograph of winning's big hit Thursday night. Then Dave Winfield proceeded to say what he's said a lot of lately. Thanks. This is the gravy that goes along with all that pressure leading up to 3,000, Mike and Inga. You know, since reaching the 3,000 hit plateau, Winnie has not had another hit, but of course he knows what hit he will be remembered most for. I'll show you what happened on the field today with the Twins and Blue Jays, as well as week three of the NFL coming up in sports. I think he, he's still got quite a few hits left in that bat, I think. Yeah. Uh, the bronze one, especially. <laughs> doesn't dent very easy, doesn't break either. Okay, thanks, right. Jess. Well, there's still a lot more ahead here on Eyewitness News. At tonight's the annual Emmy Awards. Find out how this ceremony will make the fans feel more a part of it. Some Twin City celebrities take a daring drive for the Arthritis Foundation, including that guy next to me, our own Mike Finkley. <laughs>
That must have been happening before noon today. That's when the rain rolled in. I'll let you know how long the rain is going to last. The AccuWeather 5 forecast is coming up. Hey, Abra, aren't you the perfection people? That's right, perfection. It's a dirty job. Yeah, yeah, I know, but somebody's got to do it, right? Well, what you might not know is that we also offer quality glass installation and repair. Well, what do you mean, quality? Glass is glass. No, sir. There's good glass and there's cheap glass. At Abra, we only install good glass with a lifetime warranty. That's your right. My right to choose, huh? I'll choose Abra. Call Abra first. They'll handle everything with your insurance company for you. 544 Abra. Choosing the right heating and cooling dealer used to be a real guessing game. Furnace man. But now, with Lennox quality dealer standards, Lennox products and dealers are an unbeatable team. Family owned and operated, Gens Ryan has offered outstanding service for over 40 years. Call Gens Ryan, the energy efficient family. For over 30 years, Midland Heating and Cooling has been Minneapolis's dependable Lennox dealer. Give Russell or Larry Gregg at Midland a call today. Buy a qualifying Lennox system now and get a free color TV. For years, Pentex has been world-renowned for camera lenses. Now, from Pentex's Minneapolis factory comes an amazing breakthrough for eyeglass wearers, the Pentex anti-reflective lens. I work on a computer screen or at a computer at work, and the anti-reflective coating has made a great difference as far as how soon my eyes get tired and how long I can sit and look at the screen. Vision World, 32 locations including Brookdale, Southdale, and Eden Prairie Center. When you work one job, grab a quick lunch, a quicker dinner, and move on to job number two. How are you going to spell relief? That's a big relief you can feel, because Rolaids absorbs 47 times its weight in excess stomach acid to stop heartburn fast. So for millions, there's only one way to spell 100% relief. Rolaids spells 100% relief. Well, tonight's the night that television honors its own in the 45th annual Primetime Emmy Awards. And you can see the awards extravaganza right here on Channel 5 beginning at 7 o'clock. Yeah, and a warm-up for the big event. Awards in creative arts categories were given out last night. Cable TV reigned supreme with HBO picking up 11 trophies in technical and performance categories. I feel like we should have envelopes or something. I, I do. <laughs> I, I was just thinking that. So ABC <laughs> and CBS were next with nine each. Here's a preview of tonight's ceremony with the host, Angela Lansbury. And the Emmy goes to... We're talking about 57 countries. We're talking about 600 million people, 14 different languages. I mean, it, it's just mind-boggling. Putting together a three-hour live show is always fun because uh, in many ways you don't know what to expect. Oftentimes, more can go wrong than can go right on an award show. I always have this nightmare of on a live show like this, which is being seen by 500 million people, what happens, for instance, if Prompter goes down? It will get very intense the last two weeks as we approach September the 19th. We'll have all together probably seven to 800 people, uh, you know, working on the show. I was at the, uh, the sculptors yesterday on the Emmy. Yeah. It, it's now sculpted and it's going to the uh, fiberglass or tomorrow. One of the and, things that, uh, that our producer, Don Mischer, wanted to accomplish this year was to do a set that was uh, elegant and classy and sophisticated. Um, and I think that's what basically what we've achieved here. We're going to see a set that has a, a tremendous range of lighting possibilities to it. It's all frosted plexiglass and, uh, and frosted glass and steel and uh, those kind of surfaces. So they light beautifully. So it's a big, glamorous uh, look to the show this year. Let me tell you, this year on the Emmys, uh, Don is, is planning really some very exciting things. He's going to have banners and kiosks. He's going to have the fans much closer. They've always been across the street, you know. But this time, they're going to be right up close to all of us as we walk in. They're going to be right there. So there's going to be much, much stronger sense of fans and personalities and stars and so on. It's going to be a far more um, like a party. It'll be like a street party. Angela Lansbury, our newest correspondent. Uh, once again, you can see the Emmys tonight on Channel 5. ABC will begin airing the awards at 7 p.m. Actress Angela Lansbury will be hosting the ceremony. Well, an uh, amazing ceremony at the Minneapolis Art Institute today. This afternoon, the Art Institute unveiled its new Labyrinth Plaza and Pavilion. 
The sculpture and its pathways are located on the south lawn of the museum grounds. And inside the museum, patrons got to take part in some contemporary Greek dancing. And children created their own mazes with some construction paper and a little bit of glue. Good thing they were inside there. It's, yes. it's been a cold and dismal and rainy day in the Twin Cities. I don't know if there's anything good to say about this. Day. It's a great day to sit inside, be a couch potato, watch a lot of football. That's Unfortunately, it. though, we had to work. But uh, Chris Grote, he'll be in next to talk about this dreary weather. Stay with us. You are going to love this house. You see, it's hard to be lived in. Korean countertops are created for cooking. I don't think the woman knew how. Korean's virtually stain-proof, so you can... And the bathroom. Immaculate, as you see. No kids, no pets. And Korean surfaces stand up to... They must have been a quiet, elderly couple. DuPont Korean, created for life. For the Kellys, it was sending their children to college. For Tom Gray, it was being his own boss. Everyone has a dream, but these people also have a bank that helped their dreams come true. First American Bank. Strong. Responsive. Each bank making its own local decisions. Knowing you by name. Sharing your dreams. First American Bank. Where the American who comes first is you. Winter belongs to those who don't wait. So get to your Polaris dealer fast to get the best deal of the year. Take delivery from dealer stock of a new Polaris by September 30th and get $300 worth of Polaris winter wear and accessories absolutely free. Hurry, don't wait. This offer is good only through September 30th at your local participating Polaris snowmobile dealer. Nobody cries, nobody dies, nobody cares like Polaris. First chiropractor for relief of painful auto injuries. When you think of auto injuries, whiplash is the first thing that comes to mind, right? Well, that's just the beginning. The soreness in my back and leg followed. Then came the headaches. First chiropractic helped relieve all my pains. My back and neck feel great, and the headaches are gone. I can't say enough good things about my first chiropractic doctor. How's yours? First chiropractic, the injury doctors. Call us first, 24 hours a day. And Chris is here for weather. Yeah. What a miserable day. You've been out in... I, I've been sick all week. I thought I was beating it, and then I went out today to do a story in the rain, and now uh -huh. it's back. I'm uh -huh. coughing between every commercial break. Yeah. <laughs> all the rotten adjectives. Get uh, them out. Now, you hit the nail on the head. Today would have been the day to watch me. football. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not even a Vikings game to try to brighten this thing up today, either. Kind of a bummer there, yeah. <laughs> Some twins didn't help. Yeah. <laughs> well, the rain is continuing. It looks like we're going to have a... Gosh, it could be a solid 24 hours of rain coming up. It's going to taper off over the next couple of hours, but overnight tonight, another batch of rain will be moving in. It's going to be a gloomy start to the work week. What was yesterday? Gorgeous, right? Wow. This is the radar since about 3 o'clock this afternoon. You can see how the rain has been progressing steadily northward, and it almost looks like there's a clearing line right here, right? But uh, actually, that's just all the further the radar can see. There's a ton of rain sitting down here. It's raining all over South Dakota, Iowa. That rain is pushing northward, and uh, we'll be off and on in the rain for the next number of hours to come. Let's move in a little bit here. Right now, from St. Cloud down through about Monticello into northwestern Hennepin County, that's where the heavier rain is, where you see this little darker shading of green. This is all pushing to the northward again, and more rain is filling in. It's still raining in Mankato. Outside Minneapolis and St. Paul, a crummy evening. It's 51 degrees, 93% relative humidity. There's some fog out there also, since, uh, since there's so much moisture in the atmosphere. We have an easterly wind at 16 miles an hour into the almanac today. The high midday at about noon, 55, 44 below this morning. 14 hundredths of an inch of precipitation in Faribault. They've had a third of an inch so far. 94 and 33 are the records. The sun will rise tomorrow, blanketed by clouds at 656. Satellite pictures. Get a, get a look at this. This is a wintry-looking storm. You get that little spin going in the atmosphere right there? That's the center of the low. These white clouds are the next to move in. This gray area here, that's where it, the rain has tapered off just a touch. It's been raining all day long. Boy, I tell you, if this was two months later, we'd be talking a ton of snow right along a line about here. Thank goodness for, for that, right? Here's the low tomorrow near La Crosse. Cold rain out ahead of it and real close to the back edge of it. 
I really think it's going to take uh, about 36 hours before we see some of this drier air move in. And already on the map, some rainfall. This is the next system beginning to move into the map. That'll be showing up along about Wednesday. The driest day of the week should be Tuesday. High temperatures, cold under the clouds. We should reach in 50s, maybe 60 if we're lucky. There is some warmer air out there, but that's with the sun, maybe Tuesday. The AccuWeather 5 forecast. Overnight tonight, pretty much what we've had. Just rainfall off and on. A lot of wind, too. Kind of a raw wind, 15 to 25 miles an hour. Into the morning hours, cool, damp, when you hit the car seat, about 50 degrees. Tomorrow afternoon, maybe 60 if we're lucky. The showers will continue for the better part of the day and then just kind of taper off during the afternoon. Monday night and Tuesday, clouds and sun on Tuesday afternoon, 67. Tuesday looks like the driest day of a kind of what could be a crummy week. We're getting into a, the transition of seasons. Summer usually is pretty quiet, pretty nice, with the exception of the, the storms, all right? But as we move into fall, the storms kind of linger a little bit more, and they last a couple of days instead of breezing through in one. Every so third day, as you said yesterday, would get be a little sunny. sun. And yeah. crummy is your adjective of choice today. <laughs> <laughs> I must have picked that up for you. Today. <laughs> I know. <laughs> See you later. Thanks, Chris. Well, should the government buy back the homes of people living in the flight paths of Twin Cities International Airport? That decision will come tomorrow from the Metropolitan Airports Commission. Tonight at 10, you'll hear from some people who desperately want out and some who are fighting to stay in their noisy homes. Also ahead, who's the new DFR House Majority Leader? And Ivan the Terrible is coming back to America. Please join us after the Emmy. Still ahead on Eyewitness News, a race through the streets of downtown St. Paul. Yeah, some well-known Twin Cityans get behind the wheel for a good cause. You'll see them in a mini Grand Prix that features that guy again, our own Mike Finkley. And Parnelli Jones, he is not. <laughs> Anyhow, up next, week three in the National Football League. Plus, the pennant races. Toronto takes the Twins, and with it, even a bigger lead in the East. I'll have it all next in sports. It's Apple Fest time at Creative Expressions, where you'll find everything you need to brighten your home. New fall merchandise is in, and Creative Expressions has both ideas and personal designers to assist you. This is Creative Expressions' largest fall sale with bushels of savings. Enjoy 50% off all silk flowers and custom picture frames. There's a harvest of savings in every department. Whether you need a custom design or an Apple Fest accent, you'll never pay extra for excellence. Only at Creative Expressions. You know, I'm an old-fashioned guy. I believe in giving people more for their money. So not only is everything on Wendy's Super Value Menu 99 cents each, but on our Junior Bacon Cheeseburger, you get two full strips of bacon. Our Biggie Fries are big, like our baked potato. Plus, Wendy's Hamburger Kids Meal with a toy is just $1.99. At Wendy's, you don't pay more, you just get more. Every day. And that's the truth. The 9 for 99 Super Value Menu and $1.99 Hamburger Kids Meal at Wendy's. Create a warm, beautiful heart with a Heat & Glow fireplace. Heat & Glow's direct vent gas fireplaces do not require a chimney. The airtight firebox exchanges outside combustion air and exhaust gases through a balanced flue system. These patented fireplaces are clean burning and energy efficient. For your existing fireplace, Heat & Glow offers gas logs and efficient gas or wood burning inserts. Heat & Glow, the smart choice. Available at... Kimberly Greenwell didn't believe following Weight Watchers would work. Nor did Roger Dacre. And they're just two of the millions of people we've taught to lose weight at Weight Watchers, eating delicious everyday foods or using our personal cuisine food plan. And if you join now, you can even register free. Save $19. So hurry and call Weight Watchers today. As we were saying earlier, the uh, Vikings have a bye week, of course, mm -hmm. this week. It, it appears the Twins didn't show up today either, oh. <laughs> at least not. <laughs> Easily a good news, bad news oh, kind of yeah. uh, lead story here, Mike King. As we uh, saw at the top of the hour, another special day for Dave Winfield and his fans at the Dome against Toronto today, but a uh, not-so-special day for Winnie and the Twins in the end. Again, Winnie, along with his wife Tanya, honored by the Twins and Jays in a special 3,000-hit pregame ceremony. Then the first place Jays went on to, uh, oh, dishonor the Twins to the tune of 10 zip. Lots of offense, including John Olerud's two-run double off Larry Kazian here in the seventh. One of 10, yes, 10 doubles today by the Jays. World champs are flexing their muscle at the right time of the year. That's eight straight, once again, 10 zip Toronto. 
Their win looms large tonight as it puts another full game between the Jays and New York. The Yankees fell to four games behind the world champs today, unable to handle the Red Sox at home. John Ballantyne pegged a Frank Tanana pitch for a two-run homer today at the stadium to help the Sox stop the Yanks. 8-3. Other contenders, Baltimore creeping up there, beating Milwaukee today 8-4. Chicago just now beating Oakland 3-1 in the 7th. Texas leads California 7-3. National, Montreal beats Philadelphia to pull to within 4. San Fran beats Cincinnati. The Braves play later tonight. Week 3 of the NFL season and the Vikings are off. And the Vikings resume the season next week against the Packers. The only NFC Central team to play today was Detroit which was in New Orleans to take on Wade Wilson and the Saints. Wilson came in the NFC's top passer. He threw two more touchdowns today, including that 17-yarder to Hobie Brenner. The Saints defense, well, they would take it from there, holding the Lions to only, only three points. 14-3 the final. Saints are 3-0. The Lions fall to 2-1. Game of the day so far has been in Philly between the Eagles and Redskins. Randall Cunningham and Calvin Williams put on... Quite a show. First Williams hauled in this pass, raced 80 yards for the first touchdown of the game. He just simply outran the entire Redskins defense. Then with 10 seconds to play, Cunningham hit Williams again. His third touchdown catch of the day. He wound up with 181 yards. They're pretty excited about it. The Eagles stay perfect after three games by beating Washington 34-31. to the top two picks in the year's NFL draft went head-to-head -to -head today in New England. The Seahawks' Rick Meyer and the Patriots' Drew Bledsoe. Meyer threw one touchdown pass before leaving with an eye injury. Bledsoe had two touchdowns, and the Pats could have won this game on a last-second field goal. Oh, but it will hit the crossbar. Seahawks win 17-17. Yeah, what a bum. Giants beat the Rams today, 20-10. Pittsburgh over Cincinnati, 34-7. Fourth quarter is San Fran by 7 over uh, Atlanta. And uh, the Raiders over Cleveland, 16-3 in the fourth. Also in the fourth, San Diego behind John Carney's five field goals. This is the guy who kicked six a couple weeks ago, 15-14 over Houston. The Gopher football team must have felt like they were on a roller coaster last night. First they were down, 17-0. Then they rallied to take the lead, only to fall in the final minutes. You got the picture. The Gophers had just taken a 25-24 lead with five minutes to play when Kansas State's Andre Coleman. No, they don't want to see this over at the U right now. The kickoff returns 72 yards to hook up the Wildcats winning touchdown. Tim Shade then guided the Gophers back down the field. First and goal from the four, but the Gophers couldn't score. Final chance here as a pass sails over the heads. Kansas State held on for a 30-25 win. Next Saturday, Gophers are at San Diego State. You heard of singing in the rain? How about cycling in it? Cold spell of September Minnesota weather greeted today's races at the Norwest Cup International Bicycle Race, featuring world-class and Olympic-caliber cyclists. This year's competitors rode on a 120-mile course in Minneapolis. Ben and Nan were greeted by a cold splash of Minnesota weather. Four hours, nine minutes, 29 seconds later, Scotts Valley's California Chris Huber had taken away first place prize money and hardware. The Norwest Cup is the final event of the Tour of America. Think it was cold here? Well, it got a little squirrely out there in Cold Valley, Illinois, as well as a little frosty. David Frost heated up the tournament with a low of 21 under to win the Hardy's Classic going away today. This was Frost uh, with one of many birdies. Next closest competitor would be a library. And, you know, you stand up there in that key and squirrel runs across your way. Just kind of keep Keep focus. <laughs> Just let it go. <laughs> All right. Yeah, St. Thanks, Eric. Well, finally tonight, race cars took over the streets of downtown St. Paul for much of the day today. It's the annual Mini Grand Prix race for the Arthritis Foundation. And among today's racers, a familiar face in the celebrity division, Mike Binkley appeared to wipe out a little bit more tires and bump a little bit more hay bales than anyone else, <laughs> at least when he was warming up. Although he appeared a bit embarrassed at the end of the time trials, he actually finished third. That was just practice. That was just practice? Yeah. Oh, that's good. I'll just say what happened at turn seven. <laughs> I, I think I provided the most exciting spills of the day, and really that's what the fans are out here to see. <laughs> Is it just me, or, or does he look a lot like Speed Racer? <laughs> Go Speed Racer. Do you remember racer. that? With we, Shim Shim. We seem to be going a lot faster than it looked like on the videotape uh -huh. there, but that was a blast. Thanks uh -huh. a lot, Color Engine. <laughs> that wraps up the early edition of Eyewitness News. Thanks a lot for joining us. Yeah, we'll see you tonight at 10 o'clock. That's after the Emmy Awards. Have a good night. A Winnie Rap for